So let's do full least squares. Our response is still y, which is y1 to yn. And now we have a collection of vectors. The first vector for x might be BMI. The second one might be blood pressure. And the third one might be whatever else. But it's organized in such a way that each column is a variable. And each row corresponds to the corresponding element of y. So y1 is the response where row 1 of x is all of the associated predictors lined up with the first variable in the first column, the second variable in the second column, and so on. We're going to assume that x is a full column rank. In other words, that there's more subjects than there are variables, and that there's no redundant variables in x. So as an example, we couldn't have BMI and 2 BMI, just the BMI column multiplied times 2, as a second column of the x matrix. Then that would create a redundant column, one that's perfectly explained by the other columns, a linear combination of the other columns, and so the rank would not be p, it would be p minus 1. So we're going to assume n more subjects than we have variables, and that the rank of x is exactly p. In other words, no collection of linear collection of columns from x can perfectly explain any of the others. We want to find the best hyperplane that explains y. In other words, we want to find the best y equal x beta equation. We want to find the beta that does that the best. If the first column of x is a vector of 1's and the second column of x is a vector of regression values and the rest are, and that's in the dimension of x is 2, linear regression is a special case. Okay, Generally the first column of x is a vector of 1's but often we'll have more than one variable so it'll not just be linear regression. If we have two regression variables that will give us the equation for a plane. The fitted equation will be a plane. Three variables, it'll be a hyperplane and so on. So our goal in the general sense is to find the best fitted hyperplane of dimension p that minimizes the sum of the squared vertical distances between the observed y values and the fitted plane. This is tantamount to just minimizing the norm y minus x beta where we square the norm again over beta where beta is now a p-dimensional vector. Once again we expand this out we get y transpose y minus 2y transpose x beta plus beta transpose x transpose x beta. If we take the vector derivative of beta we get negative 2x transpose y plus 2x transpose x beta, set that equal to 0. This yields the set of equations x transpose x beta is equal to x transpose y. These are the so-called normal equations. So just to remember, remember x is of dimension n by p and it's of rank p. There's a matrix algebra result that says x transpose x and x x transpose all have the same rank as x. In this case, we're interested in x transpose x. It is a p by p matrix of rank p. So it is invertible. So we can solve for beta hat, and we get x transpose x inverse, x transpose y. Commit this formula to memory. By the end of the class, you for sure will. If we wanted our fit of values, we would just multiply this beta hat times our matrix x, That'll give us our corresponded y hats or points on the plane. The fitted values are x, x transpose x inverse times x transpose times y. Another formula you should commit to memory. Also, if we take a second derivative, we find the Hessian, we get 2x transpose x, which is a positive definite matrix. So beta hat in this case is indeed a minimum. So it's satisfied a second derivative condition. So that's using vector calculus. Let's see if we can figure this out in a more clever way where we know the answer first. So we have y minus x beta, norm quantity squared is what we want to minimize. We could add and subtract x beta hat. Where again, to remind you, beta hat is x transpose x inverse, x transpose y. If we expand this out, and I'm collapsing things and, and making it a little neater, we get norm y minus x beta hat squared plus 2 y minus x beta hat transpose x times beta hat minus beta plus 
norm x beta hat minus x beta quantity squared. Consider just this middle cross product term. We get y minus x beta hat transpose times x beta hat minus beta. If we plug in what beta hat is, we get y minus x, x transpose x inverse, x transpose y transpose times x times beta hat minus beta. If we factor y out of this, we get y transpose times i minus x, x transpose x inverse, x transpose quantity transpose x beta hat minus beta. This term, i minus x, x transpose x inverse, x transpose, is symmetric, by the way. So the transpose doesn't do anything. It's also idempotent, I would add. And also i and x, x transpose x inverse, x transpose are all idempotent. Very interesting. More on that later. Let's consider this term. We don't have to consider the transpose because it doesn't do anything. Now, just moving down to the next line, we can multiply through by x, and we get the x times the i, the identity matrix, yields x, and then we have minus x, x transpose x inverse, x transpose x, but x transpose x inverse times x transpose x is i, so we get x minus x, that's zero, so this term in the equation up there is exactly zero. So we get that the norm of y minus x beta squared is equal to the norm of y minus x beta hat squared plus the norm x beta hat minus x beta squared. If we drop this latter term, we can only get smaller because we've dropped something positive. It's a norm squared, so we've dropped something that's for sure positive. So what we find is that y minus x beta norm squared has to be larger than y minus x beta hat norm squared. So, in other words, beta hat has to be the minimizer of y minus x beta because any other value yields a bigger norm. So let's recall, beta hat is x transpose x inverse x transpose y, y hat is x times beta hat. So this is the famous least squares result for full rank design matrices. Any PhD statistician can quote all these results off the top of their head. It's you need to go through this if you're a PhD biostatistician or want to be like a PhD biostatistician. Just go through this stuff very carefully and commit it to memory. This is just sort of as bread and butter as it gets in the field of statistics. The matrix X is called the design matrix. If X is not full rank, then the solution I have is not applicable because X transpose X is not invertible. This can happen when n is larger than p, or p contains redundant columns. Let me re now relate this result back to the linear regression result that showed that the solution to the slope was the covariance between y and x divided by the variance. Let's give the analog of that in this matrix sense. So it's going to take a little bit of linear algebra, but we're, but we're okay with linear algebra. So if x contains a vector of ones, so x is equal to jn is the first column, and let's write x1 as everything else, the p minus 1 next set of columns. Then x1 is n by p minus 1, okay? And our beta is beta naught, the intercept, and beta 1, an n minus 1 dimensional vector of parameters for the remaining terms. Then we have that the least squares criteria is norm y minus, we want to minimize norm squared y minus jn beta naught minus x1 beta 1. Again, we're back to if beta 1 were known, this is mean only regression, and we know what the solution has to be. We know that beta naught hat has to equal 1 over n y minus x1 beta 1 transpose times jn, which basically works out to be y bar minus the column wise average of x1 transpose times beta 1. This means whenever you have an intercept, you are going to force that fitted plane to go through the point that is the mean of all the x variables and the mean 
of the outcome variable. So this is that's the generalization to that result. Plugging this solution into beta naught, we get the following criteria now, where now we have y minus jn y bar, so in other words, the centered version of y, minus x minus jn x1 bar, where x1 bar is the p minus 1 vector of column-wise averages of x1. This is subtracting off the column, -wise. this is centering every column of x. So let me just write y tilde as the centered y vector, mean subtracted y vector, and x1 tilde as the x1 matrix with the um, column-wise mean subtracted from each column. Then now we're back to the least squares problem, but now with y tilde and x tilde as our response vector and our covariate matrix x1 tilde. So we know what beta 1 hat has to be. It has to be x1 tilde transpose x1 tilde inverse x1 tilde transpose y. Okay? So we can also multiply and divide by a 1 over n, but because of the inverse you have to be careful that you don't mess it up. But when you do that, now you have the x1 tilde transpose times x1 tilde times 1 over n. That is exactly the covariance, the empirical variance covariance matrix of x1 with itself. And then x1 tilde times y tilde times 1 over n is exactly the covariance between x1 and y. So directly extending linear regression, we see that the result for multivariate re re regression is a covariance term involving the x's times a I'm sorry, the, the variance covariance term involving the x's inverted times the covariance term between the x and the y's, where in linear regression it just works out to be the covariance between the x and the y's divided by the variance in the x's. So it's a, the direct extension, of course, of linear regression, but it works out to be this convenient formula.